Um, Sharon, if you can hear me. Um, oh, and you are. Oh, my God. <laughs> showed up. Thank God. Yeah. My oh. phone just had to go the opposite direction. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All the technical details. Exactly. <laughs> I know. I know. It's crazy. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. So, um, where did I leave off with you? Because I was... I went on for about three minutes, five minutes more. Yeah, I don't know if you heard any of that. Um, yeah, I could hear you. Um, the last thing I had wrote, written down was value-based. Um, oh, good. Time wage, wage. value-based yeah. thinking. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, time wage versus value-based thinking. Your time wage thinking is still, your, your value-based is not big enough for uh, effective entrepreneurial output. But your dedication, like your drive, is uh, there and delivering val um, uh, It's your belief around money is what I'm trying to say. And so that's, that is sort of what gets in your way. Um, that's one of the issues that I would okay. urge you to sort of shift around and um, deserving is the other area. I am um, getting that sometimes you sort of feel that you deserve and other times you are thrilled by helping but when people give back to you it's challenging for you to accept it wholeheartedly. You mm -hmm. do a very nice, uh, pardon me for saying this, but you do a very nice uh, fake genuine accepting of the, the thing. <laughs> it's so appropriate however it's not heartfelt so you don't build on that deeply inside of yourself and i'd love to see it fill you up more because it, it's um it feel it feels good after the fact for you but it doesn't feel great for you in the moment and that's mm -hmm. that's um unfortunate you know so i would really give that a a, a look and see if you can so to shift that around. And if you want to ask me some questions about it, or I can leave it and we can go on to other stuff. Um, well, you hit it on the head for sure. Uh, <laughs> it's very Sorry. uncomfortable for a phone call. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, keep exiting that. Um, I do feel very uncomfortable um, with accepting things. I have done a lot of work in the last few months as far as being more um, with working with, with money and, and what it means to me and the power of, of money versus time. So I have done a lot of work that way um, to where I'm more comfortable, where it doesn't have that grasp on me as much I, I perceived. But uh, again, when someone wants to pay for a drink or a dinner or pay for something, I find it very uncomfortable. I feel I have to pay yes. first. It's almost that that's, it sounds really horrible, but um, they'll like you if you pay. They may not like you if you don't. I almost put that's my value that I bring mm. that, I guess, is what I kind of have looked at and kind of working why I feel that way because I have identified that before um, but trying to figure out why and right that's kind um, of where I've come I would work on what not the why because the why will mm. create a loop for you and you'll mm -hmm. be stuck in a why loop and that will be sometimes really um, it'll be feel really good and other times it will it'll be uh, feel bad about it and you won't quite be able to put your finger on what it is exactly, but that's because you're using judgmental thinking and the why right. puts it into judgmental thinking rather than what's effective here and what works. And okay. being gracious work for me here. Does being appreciative work for me? And I'm blending words that I don't think you put together in your mind around that, like appreciation and, and um, you know, and does is that a caring way does caring about me work for me right now? Right. Rather than does caring about me make me feel good? Because you'll go, yeah, it makes me feel good, but I also <laughs> feel guilty. Mm -hmm. so exactly. Because you've paired these things in your brain. And I'm trying to decouple these things for you so that they're not, 
you know, hooking you into the judgment mindset. And so the why language that you still are a little too in love with, sorry, mm -hmm. <laughs> just saying, yep. Um, yep. you're still into your whys um, and why things are happening because you're looking at the motivation that as opposed to, and not even the effective motivation of it, you're looking at why from a behavioral, uh, sorry, from a, a, when somebody does a behavior, why did they do that? What did they want from, now it's making you go through mm -hmm. all of these hoops that you've gone through in the past. And right. what these things that they're doing to you as opposed to doing. And they're just doing. And they may want something, but they have to, you have to have a choice in the matter. And by you figuring out what they're doing to you, believe it or not, you sort of abdicate some of your responsibility and control for that to the other person and you've given them a power that they probably don't need to have at all you know and and that sort of thing so mm -hmm. it, it's um it's a very slippery slope that you're on there with that so shifting it to does that work for me or does that not work for me and what mm -hmm. a, what part of that works for me what part of that doesn't work for me and try and get it so that you understand are they actually attempting to appreciate you? I, I you know, mm. I got to tell you a, a short story. Um, back in the day when I was working as a relatively new coach, it was my fifth or sixth group that I'd done at Life Skills Colleges. Uh, well, back then it was Life Skills Training Center. We hadn't actually become a college. Well, we hadn't actually applied to for the name of college yet, and. Um, at the training center, I wound up having a group that I was doing, and it was just before Christmas, and 100% of the group of members were on social assistance. Mm -hmm. And so social assistance is very, very tight with their money that they give out. It's got to be pretty smart with every cent, literally every cent, to survive, let alone thrive or do something mm -hmm. and somehow the group managed to pool their money together and got me a, a very nice present um and it was rather expensive it was back in the day it was like 150 bucks and that was a big deal you know for me let alone you know anybody else mm -hmm. and it was you know anyway i wound up doing it it was our our pre-christmas get together um and before we had the holiday break and came back um and it still impacts me big so i went wow um mm -hmm. this is amazing thank you so much and then i looked up at the group and looked around at them and said you guys have to take this back you know, <laughs> like i i mean I, I i very much like this but you have to take it back their faces just fell like it was like it would have been kinder to get out a machine gun and just shoot them all you know because i wounded them so deeply it was mm -hmm. painful it still it impacts me to today mm -hmm. i mean it still does and that emotional gutting that i did to each of those people in that split second meant they were poor and I wasn't. They mm. didn't have the right to give me a gift like that. It was a horrific thing that I did to them. And when people are giving you something, it doesn't mean that you don't have to um, be obligated because you don't. It is a gift. Some people try to obligate you through giving. Mm -hmm. But receiving is a skill too. And just receiving that information, that gift, that thank you, that allow me to pay for the dinner mm -hmm. is a pleasant thing that you do for somebody because they care about you. 
because they wish to help you. And you, the, the way that you're aligning this is, is not that way. It's, 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 you remind me of a line from a Rod Stewart song. And, you know, why do I always seem to get tangled up in my whys? I mean, why? Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the line is, why do I always seem to get tangled up in my whys? And I mean, that's why. That is literally why, because it's a freaking why. And you're doing it for yourself, and you send a massive mixed message to that other person. And there is so much grace and kindness inside you. And it's such a mixed message when you feel so... And I'm going to present this one kindly because it's you feel confused by the message and you give a confusing mixed message back out mm. to somebody else because you don't want to be obligated. You don't want it to be um, unequal. But it's not about a lack of equality. It's about a lack of acceptance on mm -hmm. on somebody willing to give and you willing to receive. Mm -hmm. So I would sincerely practice receiving and getting yourself squared away with that like comfortably because mm -hmm. that um, receiving part has to align in business as well so that the value piece and the money piece start actually sinking in deeper than what it is. Mm -hmm. You've got the power piece on money. You don't have the receiving piece like for you and the warmth and the caring and the trust. You have the obligation part down. You mm -hmm. have the power piece down, but you don't have the, the kindness because money is a token. You know, somebody can give you some money or somebody can give you some flowers. You know, right. what do you do? Give them back the flowers and say, you can't give me the flowers. <laughs> or you can say, thank you. Really thank appreciate you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, how's that working for you? No, that's it's it's really good. I I speak that to a lot of people. I just don't listen to it myself. <laughs> a lot I'm of... just about going to say that. I, you yeah. know, like when I when I did the Rod Stewart thing, I went to I went I go. You know, I bet you she knows not the line, but she knows that she's doing it and she hears this in other people mm -hmm. and she just doesn't listen to herself. <laughs> you know? I try. It just doesn't I really know. cement. <laughs> You're way better for other people than you are for yourself. Way, yes. way, way better. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I actually had that exact same conversation ish with my mom where she was a giver as well all the time and other people wanted to give things to her and she couldn't receive it. She felt, um, she felt guilty and horrible asking them to do things. And I actually had that conversation because we were both very faith-based as well. Yeah. And I had that conversation where now you're keeping that, like one of the ways that they, their gifts is by giving and they want to mm -hmm. be able to give to you. I mean, you by not allowing them to give, how is that making them feel? But yet I do the exact same thing. <laughs> like mother, like daughter. Yes. The apple doesn't it, fall far from that tree. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Those apples don't fall far. No. Um, and so that's one of the, the interesting things there. Um, but opening that up and um, receiving mm -hmm. and practicing receiving. You know, one of these days, um, and it's going to be days here, I'm seriously, I'm putting together an idea for a uh, short course. Um, I, I ran the, the idea of the flagpole called uh, Slam Dunk Your Life with mm -hmm. Blair Dunkley. But, you know, slam dunk your life. I think I want to do a whole lot of, of I'd like to do some work with a, a group of people who are interested on coming together and doing stuff on acceptance, on transformation, on recognizing how to help themselves transform and just do that whole thing. Um, mm -hmm. And thank you, Rebecca, for uh, the... Uh, um, double hearts on the uh, the eyes of Slam Dunk. You love the name, yeah. I, 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 you know, 1999 was the year where I started it. That's you know, 20 years ago, and um, used that name in in uh, um, Vancouver, Canada, and uh, had 189 people in that room, and it was a uh, 
very profound moment for me personally. Mm. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, that's that's another trig trigger for me. Um, but I'd love to do the the slam dunk and make it a very inexpensive uh, proposition, but dive into deeper some of the deeper pieces here where we can go into this and start doing you know, roll up our sleeves and do the, you know, some good work with uh, individuals so that they can see how to transform their, their own lives. Um, mm -hmm. What else, how else might I help you here? I think that's a huge piece, what you've given me, especially where you say that's, that's probably one of my stumbling blocks to be able to go forward. Because I just, I feel I'm, I've always felt called to more, called to like this greatness that I had to go forth and, and do, um, but I knew there was something in my way to get yeah. there. And I wasn't quite sure I'm doing all these steps, but wondering what is it that's holding me back, right, yeah. from, from, from getting there. And, uh, and I had thought <clears throat> doing the money thing, playing with it, taking away that power that it has on me, I thought that would be the piece that would go forward. But even just the other night, friend wanted to uh, pay for uh, our coffees and I had a real resistance to it again. So could that be if I, if I was to master that, um, where I could work on that acceptance, um, and receiving, do you feel that that could be enough to put me forward? The issue, um, because the the money issue that I see is um, larger ticket items. Uh, like I'm talking about a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollar clients. I mm -hmm. think there is a particular issue with that. Uh, okay. To be um, honest about it. Um, and that's money. Um, I don't think that you're done doing your work. I definitely go, you, you, when you do things in a, an amount that is more like, um, you know, under the 250, like in that $250 range, it's like no big deal. For mm -hmm. you. It seems appropriate, but that's unfortunately in that time wage mentality thinking area as mm -hmm. well too so it's not really fully shifted over yet uh, okay so it just doesn't fully align um now it also doesn't fully align like what value you're bringing to that person's life and that's okay that side mm -hmm. that that oh, oh, you just sucked it in. Okay, yeah, it, that's that's a tell, girl. That's a tell. <laughs> okay, okay. When you yeah. do that, what does yeah. that tell you? That I don't feel I'm enough. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you feel whether or not you feel you're enough or not. It matters what they perceive. Right. Value money is always based the transaction of money is always based on perception and you're basically saying because i don't value myself you can't value me more than i value myself right okay mm -hmm. and that that's sort of like base line <laughs> now we can get it a little bit higher and go yeah there's the money and the power and the control issue which you go okay i and i go i think that's not a big issue for you, but acceptance. Mm -hmm. That's a big issue. Okay? Right. Accepting and seeing somebody, knowing that somebody else values you that much mm -hmm. is a nut for you to swallow. Yep. Yep. You know? I agree. But, you know... Would you be able to charge, confidently charge, like $10,000 for a day of your time? <laughs> I'd like to say yes, but I'm pretty confident I would probably be throwing my belief to them saying, yeah, you're crazy throwing that away. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's what I charge. Mm -hmm. Because it is appropriate. 
when you look at it, you have to know what you're doing for that person. And is this something that they can find better at a cheaper price? Right. And that's my, my thing. Now, I did a hell of a lot of work making my stuff. Um, yeah, Rebecca, you can relate to that. Of course. <laughs> like, uh, this, is, this applies to so many people here. Like so many, so many, so many people. It's not funny. And it's a big issue for most entrepreneurs. They wind up getting out there wanting to do business, but they limit their self-limiting. And, you know, one of the arguments is, is that people wind up going out there and starting businesses. And it's not an argument. It's a statement of fact is that most businesses fail after between in the first five years, the mm -hmm. vast majority of them fail in the first five years, actually the vast majority in the first three years. But the five year mark is a big help. Do you have what it takes? And do you have what it takes in so many areas? Because entrepreneurship is one of the most, it's a crucible. It's like, it's this whole area where you wind up sorting through your life in a way unlike anything else will ever do uh, to you and for you. You have to figure out your own crap and figure out stuff inside of yourself way more than what most people think. Ah, it's just about making money. It's just about business. No, it's about you. It's about your self-development. It's about how you feel about you. It's about how you relate to yourself and others around you. That's mm -hmm. what it's all about for real. Um, and people don't grasp that most of the time they don't get it and thank you jamie for harding this because it is so freaking and rebecca thank you absolutely spot on because it's such a big deal and this is the barrier block and belief that people just don't get because they think it's easy they think that it's it's just money mm -hmm. well it's not it's about a transaction that is life sustaining life giving life focused it's about going way beyond a transaction it goes way be it goes right into the heart of who you are and who i am and and caring and being genuine and authentic because what's happening in the marketplace is the more genuine the more authentic you can be the more real you are with the people around you the more they want more of you because mm -hmm. there are not a lot of people that they can trust out there right now. There's a lot of people that are saying cool things, and I've got a great ability to market, but not a great person behind that marketing. Mm -hmm. And so it's all about what do I need to say to get money out of your pocket and into mine, as opposed to what can I give you that's right. of real value. And can I demonstrate that I can accept that because I've done the work, I can get it. And yes, that's your USP. Yes, it is. But it should be and needs to be most people's unique selling proposition. Because authenticity is really that piece that we speak to. And that's how come, you know, slam dunk your life. I want to do this because I want to help guide people into more authentically being themselves mm -hmm. in business. Right. Because that's where the market is going. Like the, these Facebook lives, that's what causes people to connect with you is because there is a connection. Okay. And it's not just, yeah, let me tell you, like, well, let me sell you this and uh, you'll see it. <laughs> you'll know it. It'll be great. You know what? It'll, it'll make, you know, give you a sliced bread when it's eggs that you wanted, but you'll, you'll love it. <laughs> oh, bullshit. So let's yeah. just deal with it and move on. Like, these things are huge. And your alignment of you be a, being, when you're in your caring mode, when you're mm -hmm. in focused on that other person in front of you, you are unstoppable. You are amazingly effective and you know it. I mean, that, that smirky smile that you just did when you said, and like, and, and like, I knew you knew it. I knew you knew yeah. it. Like, and it, this isn't even like that. Yeah, of course. 
it's like, of course. It's my and strength. I, I, yeah. Sorry? It's my strength. And I do yeah. realize that's my strength. No kidding. It's your strength. Well, mm -hmm. let's use that strength. But let's build those pieces around it because that strength is evaluated. It's externally verifiable and you know that. Mm -hmm. And you, you feel that strength there, that power, that peace. It's there. It's yours. You, you can grab onto it. But that's focused towards somebody else. Mm -hmm. We got to get that piece inside of you so you grab it, hold on to it, and have it yours. Mm -hmm. You know what? Today was, this morning was just, I don't know, I woke up in a bit of a funk, um, just had a tough morning, and I started going, okay, so what do I need to do differently? Not why am I here, but what do I need to do differently? And I go, okay, pick your ass out of bed, get yourself to the gym, go do 30 minutes of cardio, well, 35 minutes of cardio, and see what how you feel then, you know, and park the rest, Blair. Mm -hmm. Put, just park it. Don't make a judgment call. Don't make a, a quick determination. Just go do what you know you have to do. Do it. So I did it. You have some of that ability, but you don't always listen to yourself. Mm-hmm. And see, the only, not the only difference, but one of the differences between you and I is I actually listen to myself. <laughs> I am a yeah. management consultant and coach and trainer, and I've created these freaking mind models. And so long as I use them, they work. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. So I use, I stop the creeping in of a possible self-judgment there was a load of emotion. I don't know exactly where it came from. It could have been because we have a, a new duvet on the bed and I had a hot night and I woke up at five, tried to get back to sleep and I never really got a full good night's sleep. Don't know what it is. Don't care. Okay? I care about me doing the things that I have to do to have a better life. Mm-hmm. And those are the pieces. Those are the critical pieces that you do. And you don't listen to yourself. You'll boot somebody else's ass around the block. <laughs> yeah. And, and you'll do it with all the love and concern and care and attention. And you'll even walk around the block the first time with them. Mm -hmm. The problem is, who does that with you? Yeah. Okay. And that, yeah, means nobody. Not even me. <laughs> <laughs> like, and not even you with yourself. Yeah. Because you're not accepting it. You deflect that. And you deflect your own good common sense away from yourself because you won't listen to yourself. You don't get disciplined enough to trust yourself. That's huge. Had something come through. Had to blink it away. Mm -hmm. But those are the realities of the situation. You know, these are the key pieces that you're going to need to work on with yourself. Mm -hmm. I am not perfect, okay? I screw up. You know, but the recovery time for me is the screw-ups don't last that long. And that's the piece that makes the difference. It's not for them never to happen. And I've got a, a, a sneaking suspicion that I was looking at years ago, a closet perfectionist who broke that model and, and got out of trying to be perfect because it was too exhausting. Um, you know, and thank God your kids grew up because super mom could pass it. <laughs> and because uh, I just go, you're a classic for a former super mom <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like that. did everything yeah. and made sure everybody else was okay and went to bed exhausted and woke up semi-exhausted and got just more exhausted during the day. You were watching me, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I had my spies back then. Yeah. <laughs> so I, yes. I wish I had that kind of money. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
No, uh, it's just those are the behaviors uh, that are well practiced, that mm -hmm. are set aside, and it's time to change. So what might you do differently? Go ahead. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. So the first steps to doing that, like how to, because I, I have identified them before, but obviously I thought I had worked on them, but not you effectively. Not, no, 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 these are not, <laughs> these, like, listen, I, I know you have, like, don't get me wrong here. This mm -hmm. is not, uh, uh, my God, you haven't done a thing. Uh, so this is, yeah. no, you've done a load of work. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't mean that there's not a load more to do. Right. <laughs> so I was looking at it more that it wasn't cementing. But what you're saying is, yeah, I have done things and have, things have cemented, but it's just it's still a process and a journey. You then a basic foundation. Okay. Okay. You haven't built a house yet. You've built right. a foundation. You've okay. laid out where the walls go and you go, wow, isn't this going to be great? <gasps> But we don't want to be, um, um, uh, oh, it's not psychopathic. Uh, um, it's an N word and it's, uh, um, it's not a, um, anyway, I can't pull it off out of my, my head right now. Uh, but anyway, the, the bottom line here is um, you don't want to build castles in the air. And yet you've mm -hmm. got a foundation on the earth with the walls in your mind. And you're not building the walls. So there's okay. sort of twofold. One of which, um, rewiring your mind for wealth would be extremely useful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's that program. Have you purchased it? Have you got it? No, um, I've done some with, um, with a coach, doing okay. some um, money, um, being more comfortable with money and taking away that power. And you and I both know Randy Stuppard. He's oh, yeah. Kind of, yeah, he's my partner right now, so he challenges me a lot Good. on a lot of things as well. Um, but as I was talking with you, I was realizing I listen to him, but it doesn't come inside, and I'm, I'm not applying that. Right. I feel I am, but I, I really am not Well, then, seriously, um, you and Randy would both benefit. So, you know, <laughs> so uh, rewiring in mind for wealth, I can't mm -hmm. recommend that enough uh, okay. for you. Uh, and it's not about money. It's about acceptance. It's about pulling things in. And it's actually doesn't get into acceptance because it's more of the, of the early stages of building that. Okay. Um, and that's one of the, the pieces. Uh, to take a look at it. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing is, come into the Tuesday night, um, like every Tuesday night, it's rewiring your mind for, uh, it's, sorry, it's the Blair Dunkley experience. I got okay. the freaking names. <laughs> um, yes. So come to my Tuesday night experience and, okay. you know, be there. Um, you'll get, you'll see what works for you. Jump on, see if you can't get on um, as a panelist, um, I try and get on as many people as I can on as panelists so that they can interact and talk in real time. And last okay. time we only had one person in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Very interactive. That's good. Very <laughs> I like it that way. I want people yeah. to engage. I want yeah. people to ask questions. And yes, thank you, Jamie. Hey, rewiringyourmind.com, uh, uh, homepage order. Like there's the, the link right there. You okay. know, you can do that. You can register for it. Um, and um, Rebecca is giving you her link with her uh, affiliate <laughs> link. <laughs> as well. So <laughs> I'll be connecting. This, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is something that's very important to me is to move to this next level. So yeah, um, yeah to put in place. I'm not, I'm not afraid to put into place what has to be put into place. It's just realizing what that is and then putting my steps forward to, to action it. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because honest to God, these whole pieces here are huge um, for you. So first things first, you wind up connecting the dots, but you've got to get your evaluation versus judgment 
under control. You've got to get your effective versus in ineffective going in your mind. You got clarity versus certainty. You still go after way too much certainty and yeah. you know, and it's not clarity on an ongoing basis. It, there's not the alignment piece that you need to go through. Um, and we don't do a ton in rewiring your mind for wealth on alignment. We do a little bit, but it um, it's not for that. Um, but these are all the things that I want to do in Slam Dunk Your Life, mm -hmm. you know, because these are the pieces that I, I keep on running into that are missing. And I don't have time, even in a in an hour and a half to two hour evening webinar, I, you know, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't fly um, mm -hmm. for that because I don't have a group that's consistent and that goes and, you know, that has a learning path to it. It's good stuff. Don't get me wrong, but it's, it's right. yeah, it, it's got a path to it, but not a, not a coordinated one. And people are getting a lot of value. However, there's more value to be gotten out of specific training. Uh, things like, again, um, one of the pieces that you don't do well is you're not selling yourself well yet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, which is IBC, igniting a buying conversation. Because you don't like the idea of selling. Most people don't. But the point here is, don't like being sold to either. So quit selling and start just knowing how to have a conversation with them. And that's <laughs> the whole thing. It's not about selling anymore. It's about a buying conversation. Because a buying conversation is seriously, seriously, that buying conversation is just about helping people solve problems. Right. And that's it. That when you buy anything, you have a problem and mm -hmm. you need to find a solution for it. And they frequently teach selling in terms of problem solution, but they teach you how to embed the problem in such a way that it, it's huge for that person, whether or not they have the problem or not. They should have the problem, and then the person feels manipulated at the end of the right. day. And then there's buyer's remorse because did I really like no? But I bought it. Like they talked me into it. I felt like I needed it in the moment. Well, that's not mm -hmm. OEC or sorry, um, igniting the uh, buying conversation. IBC exactly. It, mm -hmm. What IBC is? It's a problem solving one to see if this works for you. If it does, mm -hmm. here is a way to move through it. And if right. it doesn't, here is a way to move on. Mm -hmm. And like, that's how things in my world, in my utopic mind, should be. Like, it shouldn't be a force, it should be a choice. Mm -hmm. That's the power of choice. It just comes down to that basic, basic, basic thing. The power mm -hmm. of choice. And you're not always looking at your choices. Mm -hmm. Power of choice. You're looking at options, but not choices. Right. And I would really start putting that word choice into your life as opposed to options. Because options you've attached a lot of judgments to of what I should do and what I shouldn't do. And yeah. shoulds got to go because you're shooting yourself to death, you know. As I frequently say, you're shitting all over yourself. So <laughs> it's not funny. And you apply pressure to yourself with these shoulds. And the funny thing is, girl, when do you do that to somebody else? Like a close to never? Like you don't harp on people with that. You harp on yourself. Yes. And it's all internal. Would you Would you just shut up? <laughs> quit doing that? Because it's not working for you. Okay? Yeah. Because, yeah. like, all those shoulds are just, sorry, I get into profiling mode and I put somebody's language pattern in my brain and I go, damn, girl, you, you've got to be doing something similar to this. And then I share it and people go, oh, my God, he's amazing. He's reading my mind. No, I'm yeah. listening to what's going on <laughs> based on your language pattern. And it's fucking annoying. Sorry, pardon my phrase here, but it nope. is annoying. So, anyway, mm -hmm. it's like one of those things. It's just irritating at that mm -hmm. moment. So, because... Anyway, the point being is that you do so much good, yet you don't view how much, like the weight, the scales are not in balance in your mind. It's mm -hmm. like you have to do so much more for others, but you got to hold it equal. Like holding yourself as important as you hold them. 
not yeah. holding people more important. Because as you hold people more important and you're working with them, you're down here, but they will perceive you up here. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's really weird. It's like a lens effect. You ever look through a magnifying glass and just hold it up and look at it at a distance? Everything is upside down. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the lens effect that occurs here where you have this whole thing where, you know, yeah. you are holding them up here. They hold you up there and they feel down and mm -hmm. they actually will perceive that you're putting them down. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. There's a one out to that whole scenario. That is hmm. holding yourself equal and right. not letting them put you up or down, you requiring that they hold themselves equal. Okay. To you. I appreciate that insight. I never ever saw it that way. That's huge. Absolutely huge. Especially yeah. in my line of work now. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. Huge. So what is your line of work now? I'm I'm sales. Sorry, you froze again. Sales. So I work with hot so, Oh, you're back. What's your line yeah. of work? I work in sales for working with people with high ticket packages. So it was quite funny when you said get at you get out of sales. It was like, oh, that's what I'm doing. Cool. Yes. But that's okay when it's somebody else's high ticket package. Mm -hmm. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. You see the value of them rather than my value bringing it in. Yes. 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 Interesting, isn't That's it? That's big. Mm hmm Uh-huh. Yes. And then the other side of it is, am I enough, will they see me as enough to represent their package when I'm talking with a new client. That's where I see it there. So it depends mm -hmm. on the client and it depends yeah. on your belief of you in the moment. Mm -hmm. And that is flip flopping around. Too much. Yeah, very you, much so. You don't have that locked in you because you're you don't have you clearly. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. I see that a lot more now. I didn't realize that as much before this call. <laughs> I don't mean to, uh, this isn't to undermine you or to, to mm -mm. share anything that is, you're not very good at what you do, but you could be a whole lot better. Yeah. Because I've taken, oh, well, I mean, yeah, you know, Randy, well, then mm -hmm. you know Earl. Yes. And Earl Flormata. And like, yeah. I mean, moving him when he was a lot younger than he was um, from, you know, 75,000 uh, and wanting to do 300 uh, thousand dollars in um in gross sales and mm -hmm. in fact doing uh 1.2 million yes and the next year doing uh 38 million i mean and i don't know and he went over 1.2 million in revenue mm -hmm. in personal income uh the following year that was pretty staggering so um yep. yeah yeah he speaks very highly of that i've heard he, he actually spoke to me about that. Cool. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's a gap. Those are gaps in your mind. And yeah. the, when you align those pieces, that mm -hmm. transformation starts working and you start seeing exactly how to move yourself forward. Mm -hmm. I'll definitely be jumping on your Tuesday nights. Good. Um, and I would like to have more information with your slam dunk when you start getting that going as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a, like I'm putting together a rough uh, structure for it. And mm -hmm. the slam dunk is a, um, I, I, I gotta get the time frame here, but I think I'm gonna be keeping the cost down to around $100 a month as mm -hmm. a um, ongoing thing, just making it there. So, cause I'm, I'm noticing, I'm winding up feeling like there's certain things that I, the free level is here, but there's yeah. so much more that mm -hmm. I am wanting to do. And I am now feeling not fulfilled, but I'm feeling like I'm doing a good job with showing people and changing people's lives at the base level. And if that's all they want, that, that's tremendous. 
Mm -hmm. and, and get a bang out of that stuff. But if they want more, then you've got a lot more to go up. So, and do it in a bunch of different ways. So I want yes. to give people choices. That's beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I want to do it in, and I want to get a community of like two, 300 people on these calls. That's my target. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'd love to have that and where people can, can sit back and, and uh, jump on and, and be part of these, you know, a movement, a, a transformational movement. Mm -hmm. The mind models can do that for people. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, how, oh, wow. Uh, it sort of froze. Sorry, I just uh, noticed here. Uh, hey, Rebecca, Jamie, thank you. John, thank you. I should wave to you, too. <laughs> I just go, yes, that's it. Hey, Sherry, super seeing you here. Uh, hey, John Sue, good to see you here as well. And uh, Jamie, uh, thank you so much. Um, anyway, uh, and the comments here. Yeah, look forward to uh, great Tuesday nights. Um, love to have you in the group. So, so mm -hmm. sign up. It's uh, on the website, rewiringthemind.com, and uh, or forward slash weekly webinar, or just mm -hmm. go to rewiringthemind.com and scroll to the bottom. And um, there is a well where it's not completely at the bottom, but it's down there part way, and it's okay. sign up for the free webinar. I mean, that's perfect. What Perfect. So what works for you here? Boy, <laughs> holy crap. My apologies to everybody here. I, didn't, <laughs> I got into it, and then it, I left, came back, and re-got into it. So, hey. Yeah. No, it, it, was, it was amazing. I really loved the insight that you gave me as to what I had thought I had embraced more, but knew we, what you did is just confirmed what I knew de deep down inside, but as I was just putting films on it that I had actually um, put it in a place where I could go forward, where we're just chatting with you, it made me really realize that, yeah, I, I kind of covered it over in a bit or disguised it, but it's something yeah, that I... I, I want to work on that because I don't, I don't think it's fair for you to put it in that light. What mm -hmm. I did is I went to a different level because I go, you have worked on this and it shows in your language pattern. And mm -hmm. so you have worked on it. It's not, um, it's not that it, it's not showing, it's just not complete. That, and yes. you haven't gotten to the point where I'd say, oh no, don't worry about that too much. It's minor now, mm -hmm. move on, do other things. It's to the point where you built the foundation, now build the rest of the house on it. You got a good right. pet, but you don't have everything else built yet. So right. What it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anyway, and John, you're right. Uh, don't think the uh, training course is offered yet. Uh, but you know what? I will be doing that within the next six months. I have got a whole, I, I have to build out. Now that I've figured out how to market myself, guys, and you guys want to promote me, feel free. Go out there. Tell the world what can happen and start filling this thing up. Get more people on board. Share. Please like, comment, and share, share, share. Because I want to get this out to the world. Because um, Caitlin yesterday was freaking amazing. Sherry's uh, the day before or so was amazing. And I want to get IBC out. I want to get... Uh, yes, thank you, Rebecca. I didn't specify. It was an incomplete thought there. I'm going <laughs> too fast in my brain right now for my words. Blow myself down. But anyway, yes, IBC, Igniting the Buying Conversation. Um, and I want to do that actively and start getting that out there. I'm, I've been saving that for my high-end clients and been doing that with my high-end clients only. Um, so that's basically what I've been doing. I want to get that off the shelf and launching mm -hmm. that for, you know, people who really want to do high end ticket sales and well, any kind of selling really doesn't matter. It's how, it's how to turn that sales cycle into a conversation mm -hmm. and how to have those conversations um, mm -hmm. and how to do it because, you know, I'm selling $120,000 with conversation. I mean, and then I get an upside from that, usually uh, 5 to 
upside yeah. usually Tim. And that's it. And John wants to sign me up. Okay, great. <laughs> Thanks. Um, but that's sort of one of those things that I'll be putting out there. Um, it's going to be live training, in-person training. Um, so I have to look at my schedule, look at my client schedule. I got a, a lot of things, moments in time that I got to juggle. Um, I might do it from a, uh, a, a combination of um, both the uh, online and live training events, but the live training events have to will have to be there at, at one point there too with mm -hmm. IBC because, um, well, it's the connection that you make and it's easier when that whole thing. And when is the book coming? On IBC, that book is a uh, ways away. What I did stumble across yesterday, for those of you that want to know about it, is an old video, no, not video, sorry, an old audio cassette, actually, that I have a few of them kicking around on uh, the question concepts, which I then uh, had transcribed yesterday. And I'm turning into a book on the question concepts so that you can read that and, and pull that in. Because I, I went through quite a bit of it, not 100% of both discs, both CDs, uh, almost two hours worth of material and um, about 101 minutes. Uh, 102 minutes of material, and um, yeah, and that was an incredible thing that Melissa and I did back in 1999, and it uh, it was yeah just before the uh, millennium, and it was for Slam Dunk Your Life with Blair Dunkley. It was amazing, so that was really for that. So we, Blair, I have to run. Because we have I, to, have, I have another call. <laughs> I, I <laughs> very apologize for running this over. I didn't realize the time, and I burnt another 10 minutes. Anyway, you <laughs> have a great time, and we'll talk again soon, I'm sure. Yeah. Hopefully yes, see you. Thank today. you. Yep, thank you, you so much. I really appreciate it. Super. Bye for now. Bye.